Well, shortly we'll look at how business copes with the border between Northern Ireland and the Republic. But first I'm joined by Gordon McIntyre Kemp of the organisation Business for Scotland, which campaigns for a yes vote. And in Edinburgh, a businessman who runs a group of shops and supports better together, Daniel Johnson. Uh, Daniel Johnson, this kind of had, has non-issue written all over it, doesn't it? I don't think so. I mean, I think um, the, the person in your, in your clip just there from the University of Stirling summed it up quite neatly. We already know that we've had complexity from devolution. And I think if Scotland were to become independent, I think we, we would have to be looking at, at what might happen in terms of different regulations, different taxes, um, different regimes, maybe even different currencies. That sort of complexity adds cost to business. And in retail, those costs will end up uh, being passed on to consumers, you know, as the supermarkets have been saying this week. Yes, but it depends what all these changes are. It's just as easy to envisage changes that could mean that prices would go down. So, so it seems to be the only argument on the, on the people who want to make a fuss about this is, is to say there's something intrinsically about Scotland being independent and being a smaller country that would mean prices would go up. Well, no, because I, I, I mean, I think... You know, it, it, you know, if you listen to what I was just saying, that, that you know, the moment you have two systems, you're, you're going to introduce complexity. And for a retailer like me who's small, and if you're having to deal with two sets of, of regulations, you know, maybe two sets of currencies, you know, that's quite a complicated thing to have to deal with. And that's that sort of complexity is the administration required to, to administer different regimes, which is going to ultimately add cost to, uh, it, you know, for retailers and, and to customers. Right. Uh, now, Gordon McIntyre, Kent, the problem for your side of the argument is that while the people who support the No campaign immediately seize on this stuff and say, aha, your grocery bills are going to go up, um, mm -hmm. the Yes campaign just say, no, they won't, but you've got no more basis for saying no, they won't than they have for saying yes, they will. Um, I, I think that's actually not the case because um, to get to the uh, core truth of this matter, no supermarkets have said that they have any plans to raise prices in an independent Scotland. In fact, Morrison's have said, and, and in your clip as well, said that uh, prices could go down with the right regimes. What they have said is that transport costs for fresh food are more expensive in Scotland and that after independence, should it happen, they would run their business in Scotland differently from their business in the whole of the UK so that UK consumers would no longer subsidise the extra costs involved in Scotland. That's the point they're trying to make. It is absolutely true. I spent about seven years of uh, my career dealing at head office uh, level with Asda and Morrisons. And it is absolutely true that it does cost more to deliver food to Orkney or to Aberdeen from Leeds, for instance, but it also costs more to deliver it to Cornwall uh, or to the Lake District than, yes, but, than but, to but Leeds. But their point is that if Scotland was independent, they would run their business in Scotland separately and would not, cross cross, would not have cross-border subsidies in the way they do at the moment. Well, for a start, I actually, uh, it's been said in the interview with the, the Huffington Post, Morrison said that it would depend on the direction of travel and Scotland would have the ability to make it a more uh, a fairer environment for retailers to operate in. And if you look at the direction of travel, the, the, the white paper that's, uh, that's come out from the Scottish Government actually states that there will be a 3% corporation tax uh, cut. There have been uh, freight uh, services grants uh, and mode travel grants from the Scottish Government already, which amounted to about £4 million that Tesco and Asda have used to start distributing uh, by rail rather than road and cutting costs. All right, all so right. basically, the, the powers are there in an independent Scotland to actually create a situation where the cost of living could go down. And Andy Clark, the chief executive of Asda, has actually said he's open to have meetings with politicians right. and therefore yeah. the Scottish Government to discuss and how we can actually create that sort of regulatory regime. Right, Daniel Johnson? Yeah, but by the very same token, Morrison's are saying, and you're saying that Morrison's uh, will say that, that prices could go down, but they're also saying that if the cost of doing business in Scotland goes up, they'll pass those costs on. You know, and I think you can't just take one up. side of the argument there's without no real, the other. There's no real you know, reason for them to go up. Well, I think they just provided distribution costs, and I think you know the distribution costs won't about, change with independence; they'll stay exactly no, but, but, the same. No, but why would they pass them on to a different jurisdiction? You know, I mean, it's like saying that 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 uh, you know customers in France will, will subsidise the the transportation costs in Finland in different parts of the EU. That just doesn't happen. I don't see why businesses would be, be doing that under independence in Scotland. It just doesn't make sense. You can't say, you know, take on the one hand that prices might go down without also accepting that they might go up as well. Oh, I do accept they might go up, but I can absolutely guarantee Good. you that they have been going up 
in Scotland and across the UK, anyone who actually goes to the shops, anyone who goes to, to Morrison's or Asda and actually buys the family shopping will see that we've had about a 4% increase in food inflation in uh, the UK over the last year, which is double that of Norway, three times that of Sweden, and in Denmark, a small independent country that doesn't speak the same language or use the same currency as its uh, major trading partners, food and price inflation has decreased last year. So being a small independent nation, how come they're doing better than Great Britain? So it doesn't make sense to actually say that just because you're smaller, it depends. If you're smaller you ha and you have all the economic levers, you can create a better environment for business. And that has been uh, said over and over again. Uh, by the Scottish government, right, that on, they will let, actually let, use powers let, to improve the business let environment. Daniel Johnson, get a word in. Well, I mean, I just think it comes back to, to the same point. It's got nothing to do with about you know being smaller. It's just got to do with you know Scotland's a little a lot further right, away okay. from a lot of the markets, and that, you know that will increase costs. Th th and there have been allegations, not least by our esteemed economics editor Robert Peston this week, that uh, some businesses, in, uh, uh, not just in Scotland, but some big companies are afraid to speak out on this issue because they might get lambasted by um, the Scottish Government or by, indeed, boycotted by, by uh, people at the shops. C can you both agree that it would be a very good thing if the maximum number of businesses involved in Scotland actually said exactly what they think about this whole issue? I mean, definitely. It's why I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased to be talking on the programme right, tonight. I thought, I thought you would be. Are you? <laughs> Uh, yes, absolutely. And in fact, uh, I can tell you that Business for Scotland now has over a thousand members. No, but you, you'd like all, all businesses to all speak All businesses. Out. But the thing is that businesses are coming forward. They are willing to speak out about the, in favour of independence. But the trouble, the but reason, like the, the reason speak, who are not the, in favour to speak out as well. Well, I would encourage them to do so. Excellent. But the reason all they right. won't do so is because they're usually not willing to go on television and try and back up ridiculous scare stories like this. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go away, we'll bring you back in a moment if we've got time.